How is it? Someone says you accent. This is Crusader Kings 2. The review. You can not afford family Edison. Hmm. Very witchy, witty. But the channel says in tech. Family Edison. I highly doubt that. But yeah, uh, people have been telling me to do Crusader Kings 2 video from this. I guess he's at his best here or something. We'll see how good this is. Seth's uh, all videos are awesome, right? His reviews are perfection. Uh, lots of times I see certain games that Seth reviews and I'm fucking awesome. I should play this and then I realize, wait a minute, maybe Seth is making it sound awesome, right? Game might not be, but yeah. So let's watch this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out the reaction day. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards with the ink cards and yeah, let's watch it. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering a game which really tests the limits of my ADD medication. A game where you can grow an empire, watch it prosper, only to stub your toe, die from an infection, and watch your empire dissolve because you have no idea how inheritance works. Catch cancer, beat cancer by praying it away. Thanks, God. Spend money, invest into your own people, lose your money, go heavily into debt, borrow money from the Jews, consider paying them back. Back. Keep it instead by expelling the Jews from your country. Don't feel bad about it. We've been expelled so often, you really won't hurt our feelings if you do it again. Marry your sister. Divorce your sister. Or expel them. They're like, ah, oh, god damn it, not this again. <laughs> because she's too old. Marry her daughter instead. Turn your family tree into a family circle and watch your dynasty burn to the ground as your children collect every chromosome known to man. Of course, I'm talking about the most prolific, complex, and intricate medieval incest simulator on the market today. Crusader Kings 2. Crusader Kings 2 is a game covering nearly 700 years of human history, during which time we treated each other very, very well. Religious tolerance was at an all-time high. Human life was short and painful, and the man amputating your leg could probably also trim your beard. In other words, the good old days. But with modern technology, those good old days can be experienced all over again from the perspective of a single person you pick from the world map, who is then forced to live through your terrible decisions. CK2 falls under the definition of grand strategy, which might lead you to believe it's a strategy game. In truth, Grand strategy is neither grand nor strategic. You just paint the map with color crayons and then upload your meme image of a holy Roman Empire onto Reddit for those sick upvotes. Grand strategy is to strategy what doom is to the field of literature. Doom is not a very good book. In fact, it's not a book at all. So don't feel intimidated. This game is actually just a very simple Excel spreadsheet with a lot of poor UI scaling. But that's not the point of it. The point is the characters, which behave as uncontrollable agents of chaos that act and react to everything you do, often in the most unpredictable, illogical, and insane way possible. In other words, they act exactly like humans. But yeah. what is your objective in Crusader Kings 2? Well, the same objective as every human being. As Oscar Wilde once said, everything in the world is... <laughs> so basically they react exactly the way Crusaders did in real life. <laughs> is about sex. Except sex. Sex is about power. Power is what you're ultimately trying to gain. And in the medieval world, there are only two ways of reaching that power. War and marriage. Essentially, you're sleeping your way to the top, and in the process, you pray you don't get poisoned, cucked, or inbred before your genes can pass on to the next generation. If you fail to preserve your bloodline, your dynasty ends and the game is over. You can't just pass on your genes, you gotta look after them too. Unless Unless, of course, your seduction skills are so high that every woman in a hundred kilometer radius is already knocked up with your kids. Children aren't exactly the best at staying alive. Your child could be killed during a mass archery incident by some madman armed with an automatic crossbow, or simply smothered by his own pillow, by his own mother, holding the pillow. So much like stocks and investment, I recommend diversifying your assets. Luckily, the same applies to your potential rivals. One of my favorite things in this game is performing late-term abortions. Now, infanticide is not something I support. It's something I recommend. Remember, if you can't kill your enemies today, you can still destroy them tomorrow. Whether or not your dynasty can survive entropy and uncertainty will depend on how tactfully you can balance the needs and wants of your realm, which is completely impossible. Your vassals always want more land, your wife always wants more jewelry, and your brother always wants more of your wife. 
try to satisfy everyone, then you'll end up satisfying no one. Which is why... Alright, lots of this sounds like a fucking joke, but oh my god, things like this used to happen a lot during that time. It's all, it was all politics, right? Air kids, who marry, who do not marry, killing, basically, you know, I guess, who you marry for whatever reason, because you wanted to marry someone else, who's, I guess, queen of certain region, or princess of region, or whatever. Ah, the fucking, you know, crown politics is ridiculous. The secret to a long reign is disposing of everyone who doesn't like you. After that, you're safe, secure, and absolutely at the mercy of this game's RNG system. Aside from conscious actions, schemes, and intrigue, this game is actually played by hitting the spacebar and letting time flow by. What does time hold in store for you? Surprises. A lot of surprises. And you're gonna hate every single one of them. 99% of the gameplay is based on random events. Some are good, some are bad, and you're completely powerless to stop them. Having a great time? Not. I mean, yeah, that's the case. I mean, if you're the king, right? You're the king and you have the whole kingdom. Of course, it's the only event that would happen is something that would, I guess, hurt you, right? Somebody's trying to invade, somebody's trying to plot something. Because you're already living the life, you're the king. So, only, only thing to go, only way to go is down, I guess, not up. That is why lots of kings throughout the history try to conquer as much as places they can. So, you know, it's either, you know, either you invade people or you get inv invaded. That is no middle ground. You can't stall. Like, you can't just, okay, this is my kingdom. I'm happy with this. Nobody's going to attack me. I'm not going to attack anybody. And that's how I'm going to live my life. That doesn't happen. That's why certain people are just, you know, I guess, invade after invade after invade. Because if they don't, right, they got stalled there. And that's it. Somebody else tried to invade you now. Not anymore. You've got the plague. You've got syphilis. You've got lover's pox from sleeping with your maid. What do you do? Well, the only thing you can do, put your trust and faith in your doctor and hope for the best. Also, execute your maid for giving you an STI. The doctor manages to cure your plague. A miracle. But the syphilis? That's gonna be a gift that keeps on giving. Thank your doctor. Then, execute him for incompetence. Order a new doctor. He's insane, paranoid, and probably a spy from Imperial China. But you know what? He might just be the guy for the job. It turns out, he wasn't the guy for the job, and two of your direct heirs are now dead. They found rice grains in their chamber, but no conclusive evidence. Oh well. Anyway, your spy master informs you that your doctor is trying to murder you. You confront him and make him feel very guilty about it. He agrees to stop trying to murder you. More of your children end up dead. Also, while you are battling a lifelong struggle- Really? He pinky promise is not uh, th that shit never happens that that guy is dead if that happens that guy is like okay you know i don't have any option right i have to kill you right now that doctor would die there with STIs, your wife was having an affair with your other wife. Yeah, you, you've got two actually. God bless being a Muslim. Luckily, lesbianism is no oh, risk oh, oh. to your dynasty. Yes, in Crusader Kings 2, having a homosexual wife is probably the best decision you could possibly make. But it doesn't Damn. save you because your doctor just saved you from a life of sexually transmitted disease by killing you with a lethal dose of Chinese herbal remedies. So, try hard as you might. All your efforts will eventually come to ruin, you'll get cucked, and then you die. Quit the game, and start again. Ultimately, you're playing Crusader Kings- I mean, you're at fault here, right? You let the doctor go right there. It's your fault do for the journey, not the outcome. And the stories you create in the process are unique to your experience. No game will go quite the same. Which is why there's no reason for me to explain mechanics. Instead, let me share some stories. Once, I played as Charlemagne, King of the Franks. After my brother <laughs> died of entirely natural <laughs> causes, I was left to think on how I would conquer the rest of Europe. However, RNG interrupted my schemes. Just like that, I woke up one day, and I was gay most unfortunate. However, fortunately for me, another man of immense power was simultaneously struck with homo lust, the Pope. And so, I seduced the Pope. Pope Stephanus III was an utterly geriatric recluse, but I knew deep down inside his soul, he was just misunderstood. I wrote him a romantic poem, Roses Are Red, oh my just God. misunderstood. I wrote the gender of the court, court of Pope Stephanus III was 
the ray, but I, I can't believe this game has this kind of mechanics. It looks fucking incredible. I'm not gonna lie. For him, a romantic poem. Roses are red, violets are blue. I like penis, and so do you. My <laughs> words reached him and had their intended effect inside his heart. And soon, I was inside the Pope. The church was oblivious to our forbidden love. They had no idea. Old Stephanus was aching for more than just back pain. Turns out, it was very advantageous to have the Pope as your lover. Any piece of Catholic land I wanted, he granted. In exchange for French sausage, I received the entire Christian continent. And that's <laughs> the, the historically accurate account of how Charlemagne took Europe by taking the Pope's ass. In another game, I play... <laughs> Yeah, that's the realist right there. Come on, Pope doesn't have that level of power. I mean, somewhat here and there, sure. But after some time, people are like, hmm, something's wrong here. Played as the Polish because I enjoy being abused by my enemies and my supposed friends who need more land. How much more land? Well, however much I had. Luckily, the bubonic plague began to ravage Europe. I lost most of my territory from before, so I didn't feel too bad about it. My peasants and their livelihood were now somebody else's problem. Meanwhile, myself and my... My lord, our subjects are dying from the plague. Wait a minute, aren't those subjects who got conquered by other people? Yeah, they fuck them. They're not my subjects now. They can die. My lord, you just shook hands of one of them just a few days ago. Yeah, now they're enemy. <laughs> the court went into hiding. The gates were shut. The keys were thrown away. Until all of this boils over. However, we had another problem. Uh, food or the lack of it. I didn't really think about that. I assumed every kingdom in the Middle Ages just had a Tesco Express around the corner. So we waited, we starved, and then we found an amazing solution. Why not eat the rest of a court? I mean, they're not working anyway. So we did just- It is 25, your courtianess was divided. There's option for that, oh my God. First of all, I mean, I was doing war. I was, I guess, you know, diplomatically seducing Pope and everything. Wait a minute, I have to produce food too? And where do you, where do you think it comes from magically from the air? <laughs> that and it was entirely sustainable because I kept repeatedly inviting beautiful women to join my court oh my to be God. consumed by the court. I'm not proud of what I did, but I did what I had to, which it turned out was completely unnecessary. Apparently Poland was not affected by the Black Plague and I sort of just freaked out and ate a lot of innocent people for absolutely no reason. Look, I'm not very good at this game. Luckily, such horrific events are unlikely in modern times because of modern healthcare and sanitation. However, if a plague did have to start somewhere, would you like to say a few, well, would you like to say a few words about, um, uh, our mold? Yes, stop filming it. That's what I want to say. Yeah, but you know, I'm not the one responsible for you guys leaving organic matter for so long that we, we have fluffy organic matter. Well, I was about to get rid of it until you put it on display for the world to see. Now let me- That would definitely be inside my friend's apartment. For my last game, I decided to break his- Yeah, the plague thing didn't go well. This was from 2019, apparently and play with custom parameters. I designed it so every country was ruled by teenage girls aged 14 and over. It was pure <laughs> chaos. It was a period of intense suffering. Also, I later found out I forgot to turn off Great Conquerors, so eventually, most of the known world was overrun by Genghis Khan and her teenage sorority. Luckily, she mostly left me alone. Unfortunately, even if I got a matrilineal marriage, heir succession laws would mean that any child I produce might try and overthrow me. I was screwed, figuratively. But once again, RNG tossed me a bone. Through intense meditation and satanic rituals, I became immortal. On the other hand, <laughs> I also became an insane lunatic. And one day, in the style of Caligula, I replaced one of my counselors <laughs> with a horse. I was infatuated, yet I couldn't marry. Oh my god, this- no way in hell this can be in the game, man. <laughs> How is this possible? Look at the poster. Look, there's a Crusader Kings 2 from 2012. The poster is there. It looks very serious. Look at all this shit. 
<laughs> him. Our legal system was not advanced enough to consider human horse relations. More importantly, the game didn't let me. So I used an exploit. I made my horse a bishop. And in the process of turning my pony into a priest, he automatically filled an entire kingdom with horses, which somehow could be married. So I married and made love to a horse, producing an entire royal line of children that had no concern for the decadent ways of man. They were pure and majestic. Their only concerns were eating carrots and shitting on the streets. At this point, my queen was like a bakery because she was getting bread. There's many stories to tell, but you get the general idea. Every game you ever play will start with honest, sincere intentions, which will inevitably be corrupted and reduced to the most depraved and malicious acts you could ever conceive. But hey, it's fun. Of course, no game like Crusader Kings 2 is complete without multiplayer and friends, which always ends with you everyone. really need a multiplayer after all this shit? All the things that this game lets you do? You really do need a multiplayer? On sleeping with your wife. This happens so often that I sleep with everyone else's wife just in case. Oops. Sounds like Seth is fuck every, every man's wife at the moment, so... I'm only yes. fucking three men's wives. That's because there's only three men available in this fucking country. Multiplayer is great. Some of the best shenanigans take place in multiplayer. And luckily, only the host has to have the three billion DLC packs necessary to make this game playable. The base game, much like a woman in her mid-40s, is a bit barren. You really need the DLC to add some basic features that should have been in the base game. I think CK2 is a wonderful game, but it's also a game published by Paradox, which is why, even though I love it, I can't recommend it, because the whole damn thing costs around anything from $120 to $200. With that same amount of money, you can satisfy your daily caloric intake for 17 to 28 days on nothing but dollar menu cheeseburgers from McDonald's, one of the most basic and essential components to human life. But if you've got the money to spare, go for it. Or just marry someone rich. Most people do it for a visa, you can do it for video games. Alternatively, there are ways to obtain the DLC. Southeast London, hole in the wall. Take the USB stick and don't look back. If you do, run. If you hesitate, I'm not responsible and I don't know you. Good luck. And if you're not fully satisfied, <laughs> don't worry. There's an entire modding community out there to fix all your issues. And it's not too difficult to mod the game yourself. In my case, I was getting PTSD SD from all the death sounds, which play each time a family member bites the dust, which- Oh my god, those sounds from the game? Aha! Uh -huh. So every time he was eating and devouring people, those sounds were making, that's from the game. Who made this game? Seriously man, that's the developers. <laughs> they thought, fuck it, add everything. Think of any scenarios and add them. Well, have a listen for yourself. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, come on! I think you'd agree these are a little bit unnerving. So I replaced Seriously? every deaf sound with a bass boosted sound clip of Lego Yoda. <laughs> now, this is much more soothing to the ears. I don't even mind when people die now, it sounds great. Final score. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed reading this essay as much as I enjoyed writing it. After playing this game for so long, I finally figured out its purpose. The primary goal of Crusader Kings 2, and perhaps life itself, isn't about living a good or bad life. It's about living an interesting life, and inevitably, to die an interesting death. So, you can loudly proclaim on your deathbed, Thank God, I didn't waste it all on a boring life. Once you're dead and buried, you won't just be a footnote in history. You'll be an interesting footnote note in history. Yeah. Take and do whatever you please in this life, because eventually it ends, and life can take anything and everything away from you, except your stories. So, better make them interesting, because we're all heading towards the same destination. 7 out of 10. I enjoyed but it. It's kind of true, isn't it? Out of all Henrys, we only remember one Henry, the King Henry, right? <laughs> only one of them. Why? Because he killed his wife left and right. I think it's very interesting. However, I'm always filled with regret and a constant state of what ifs. What if I just spent all that money on cheeseburgers? Would I be happier? I don't know. I guess it would depend on whether the burgers were fresh or just the hot stale garbage they leave for a couple of hours. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild. <laughs> I love that, Merchants Guild. Yeah, look at that, Crusader Kings 2.0.
man, I didn't see this coming. I didn't, you know, I know that you know certain, uh, I guess, uh, small indie games. I don't know if this is indie game or not, but you know, one of those Dwarf Fortress type of games, right? Space Station type of game. Games like that are having too much features. That's understandable, right? But a game like this, I mean, I feel like this is this this would be something like a some kind of a strategy game, right? Some normal strategy game where you do wars and it has a historical events or something like Total War or something. But I had no idea they're gonna have this kind of element: the horses, the fucking cannibalism, and all the shit. How the fuck did they put? I think you know they developed and developed and just freeballed the ideas. Like, what you gonna do next? I wanna do this. Fuck it, add that in. This is incredible. Yeah, Seth Rich. Certain things Seth said in that one. I don't know how YouTube let him upload this video, right? I mean, that could be red flag or something. I don't know. So, nowadays, I get scared a bit every time I react to Seth video. Like, I don't know what YouTube is going to think about this. But yeah, because YouTube is getting stronger and stronger every year. But yeah. Right, well, that was Crusader Kings 2.0 review uh, by the channel Sets in Tech. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards, check out the in cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.